Hey everyone, we're here at CES 2019 now, getting used to that. And we are taking apart the Asus 2080 Ti Matrix. This card is extremely interesting. Even if you don't think you want a 2080 Ti, you should still look at it because they've integrated a radiator into the shroud. And, uh, and we have some B-roll footage of that to show you what it looks like. But we're gonna take it apart and get a closer look because they do some interesting things here. It's a unique design. It's technically a liquid cooled card. It's just that all of the liquid cooling is compacted into one board and uh, it's not hugely oversized compared to the other 2080 Ti's. So we wanna see how all that works in today's video. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte RTX 2070 Gaming OC, now available in a matte white model to match the emergence of white PC cases. The RTX 2070 Gaming OC uses a three fan cooling solution and four composite heat pipes on NVIDIA's newest Turing GPU and ships with a pre overclock of 1740 MHz in OC mode or 1725 in gaming mode. RGB Fusion is also available for the LED enthusiast. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the card. So uh, first of all, it has the same fans as the Strix, the ROG Strix 2080 Ti. We already talked about how uh, these change from the previous generation. It also has the same PCB as the ROG Strix 2080 Ti. So that's the same too. You might remember when we showed the 2080 Ti originally and did a teardown on that, the Strix, uh, we talked about some inductors that were angled differently than the, all the others and how that was for a future project that we weren't privy to at the time, but we now know what it was for. And it was for this and we have uh, well, you'll see in a moment, but the cold plate on this is pretty uniquely shaped. It's just, it's wider than all, the, it's got a bigger uh, diameter than all the others that you typically see on cards. And so even though this is water cooled in a GPU with everything compacted into one shroud, uh, they have done some pretty unique things to take care of thermals. So this is, if it's just like the Strix, which I think it is, uh, it's four screws to loosen the entire cooling assembly, which is actually really nice because there's a, a sort of a substructure under the shroud and on top of the base, or it is the base plate, that is the structural support for everything. So it only needs four screws. Now all of these spots here, uh, this is always an indication of a screw coming through, normally through the base plate, through the PCB, and then securing the back plate to the card. So that's what those are for. Uh, we might not get through those today. We're at CES, and if you hear echo, that's also why there's echo. LED switch there, nothing special. So here's here's the whole thing. It's uh, it's a bit wide shot, but uh, let's walk through it from right to left, camera right. So we've got here the cold plate. This uh, we've got a B-roll shot as well. We'll throw it in somewhere in this video, showing the typical size cold plate. The one that ASUS has here. I am 99% certain is the EVGA hybrid CLC cold plate, which is an Asetek Gen 4.5 cold plate, which you can tell because it's got the, uh, the extended base coming out of the bottom of it. That's typical of, of EVGA's uh, 4.5 Gen cold plates. This one's a bit wider. It's not Asetek. We don't 100% sure know uh, suppliers yet today of the pump or anything like that. It could be a pump like this. It could be Dynatron or a Poltec. Uh, or someone along those lines, but we'll try and find out later when we can take the pump apart. Uh, so that's the cold plate. It is large, and the reason it's large is because if we pan back over to the PCB, you will see that the uh, we come back to these inductors I mentioned. So when we, we saw the Strix originally, I said that these were rotated for a future project they didn't tell us about. And this is the future project. So that wide diameter cold plate extends, of course, because it's a, a circle into the center of the inductor line. That's why it's rotated. The reason it extends is to get full coverage of the VRAM. So the memory modules are covered here. And then the VRM, it's the Strix VRM. It, it was kind of an overkill VRM to start with. So that's good because it helps with, uh, with thermal dissipation across a wide surface area. But then they've got this base plate on top of it. And this will just be cooled by air. So it's air coming through a radiator. It's gonna be hot air. In theory, it should still be cooler than not blowing air onto it. And we'll test all that later. But uh, the air coming through the radiator will be hitting these this fin stack and that cools the MOSFETs inductor line there. It doesn't need any cooling really. And that covers most of those components. As for the interface to the, the memory, you'll notice that there's nothing on that cold plate right now. This is a, a pre-production model, so it's not done. Some stuff on here might change. It's pretty much done, but uh, one example of something that we don't know the finals on yet would be how the memory is going to sync into the cold plate. So that's either paste or pad or something along those lines, maybe thermal body, uh, but one of those three things. And then let's see what else we can look at here uh, on the, the rest of it. It's all pretty familiar. So I mean, the right side, we still have 
the fan hookups, which I'll try and get a shot of that. So two four pin fan headers in there. There's, it looks like an RGB header in there, 12 volt, and then GRB would be the pin out on that uh, with then a cable for probably the pump or the fans on the shroud. And then there's another cable uh, that we've already disconnected uh, on this side of the cooler on the right side that actually this is the one for the pump right there. There's your power and ground. And um, again, this is a non-final design. So that's your hookup for the pump. The pump is right here. So that is integrated in the shroud. Uh, and it looks like the tubing is, uh, the name of the exact tubing escapes me right now, but it looks like the kind that has the Teflon inner liner on it, which helps with permeation. Um, this stuff, you don't really want to use it in like an, uh, a closed loop that you have on a CPU where the user is bending it because uh, it is a bit more fragile to be bent. But if it's pre-installed by the manufacturer, it's a bit better use. And that's what's happening here because they're going to route it obviously in a way that it won't crack the Teflon. And so you end up with a Teflon liner that should help with permeation. That uh, I, I don't have exact detail on that, but just based on experience, I'm pretty sure that's what that is uh, for the tube type. So that's going into the, the looks like cold plate and the housing directly. So there's um, we have the top side of this cold plate with all the micro fins in a separate shot. We're not going to pull it out of here and drain all the fluid out of Asus's demo card. So uh, we'll show a separate shot of that with the micro fins, but it is a wider surface area micro fin contact than typical, which is good. That's what you want to see for a wider surface area. Last thing here for the radiator. So it, it comes all the way across. It looks like it's about a 240 millimeter radiator, but the tank. So typically you have the, the fat tank on the end of the radiator where there's just some tiny bit of extra water storage uh, that's gonna be located centrally on this card closer to the cold plate, but it does look like about a 240. So that covers the matrix 2080 Ti pricing TBD, but you, I mean, you've seen what the card looks like. So it, it will be higher than the other 2080 Ti's. It's a pretty unique design, very interesting. And we're looking forward to testing it. Uh, but that's it for this one. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for our other CES coverage. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, top us out directly, or store.gamersnexus.net. I'll see you all next time.